This video is going to explore direct and inverse variation. And before we get fully started, I would like you to actually pause the video here and read through the explanations of direct variation, joint variation, and indirect or inverse variation. And then come back and we will work through some problems together. Direct and inverse variation problems are not really mechanically very difficult, but you do have to get used of the language used. Variation problems involve fairly simple relationships or formulas, but you need to determine which one it is you need to use to solve it. Direct variation, this is a relationship that as one variable increases, the other one also increases. And it's generally represented by the equation y equals kx. You need to keep in mind two things with this formula. k is your constant of proportionality. x does not have to be to the power of 1. So it could actually be an x squared. We could have y equals k x squared here, and that is also direct variation. What you cannot have is y equals 3x plus 2, because one of the constraints of direct variation is it does need to go through the origin. So it doesn't have to be linear, but it does have to go through the origin. We happen to have a line on our notes. And usual wording that you will see is y varies directly with, is directly proportional to, or varies proportionally with, something like that. You will notice that as x is increasing, y is also increasing. So let's take a look at the examples down below. Example number one is a relationship between the power of a gear and the radius of the gear. And as the radius goes up, so does the power. So this is direct variation, varies directly with. It's going to be P equals K times R. And we want to find the constant of proportionality. This is just plug and chug. And you can solve that getting K equals 6. In a factory, the profit is directly proportional to the inventory. So in this case, we have to do a little bit of substitution. This is like a two-step problem. We solve for k, and then we use k to solve our next part of the problem. So the profit is directly proportional to the inventory. I know that if p is 100 when i is 20, that would give me a k of 5. K is a constant, a constant of proportionality, so this does not change. I then use that to solve the second part of the problem, and that's going to ask me when I equals 50, what is the power? So that would be 250. And they don't give me units there. If they did, I would use it. Joint variation is another form of direct variation, but it's varying directly with two or more variables. If you think of that y varies jointly as p and q, y equals k times p times q, you can think of this as like the area of a triangle. The area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So the area of a triangle varies with both the base and the height. Variable m is varying jointly as p and q. So that's saying m varies jointly as p and q. If m equals 88, when p equals 4 and q equals 0.4, find m when p equals 8 and q equals 1.2. So again, you have to go in, solve for your constant of proportionality, and then plug it in to solve for m. So why don't you pause here and try that problem? You should get k equals 55. And then you use that, just like the last problem that we did, to solve for m. So I have 55 times 8 times 1.2, and that will give me 528, whatever the units are. Inverse or indirect variation. This is a relationship such that as one variable increases, the other one decreases. And that's generally so shown by the equation y equals k x. Again, the x does not have to be to the power of 1. It could have a, an exponent. So we could graph any, anything that is like this, but it can't have like 6 after it. That's the one thing it can't have. So it could be k over x squared, something like that. 
So if you look at the graph, it's saying as speed decreases, time increases. You can also think of this as my speed is lower, it's going to take me longer. At a slower speed, it takes me longer to get to wherever I'm going. This is the shape of an inverse variation. If the value of x is increased, then y decreases. If x decreases, y increases. And y is varying inversely with x. So let's take a look at these two examples. The number of hours h it takes for a block of ice to melt varies inversely with the temperature. If it takes two hours for a square inch of ice to melt at 65, find the constant of proportionality. So it's telling me that h varies inversely as time. Basically, that's the way you set up the formula. So for two hours at 65 degrees, I'm going to take that constant of proportionality, and it's going to be 130. In number two, z varies inversely as p. I'm just going to go ahead and set up my equation. If z is 200 when p is 4, find z when p is 10. So this is just like the examples we did with direct, only we're using a different type of equation. Go ahead and solve that and see what you get. I got for k, 800, which means when I plugged that back in, I got z equal to 80. And in number three, you could work out that one on your own too. And I got k equal to 10, which when I plugged back in, gave me f equal to 10, 6, or 1 and 2 thirds pounds. Now we can have combination problems. So this is where you have to just keep calm and do what you know how to do. Variable m varies directly as variable t and inversely as variable s. If m equals 24 when t equals 3 and s equals 2, fine, okay? There's only one constant and we're just going to take it one step at a time. So I know it varies directly with t and inversely with s. And then I plug in, I solve for my constant, and I go back and use that constant to solve for another situation. So go ahead and try that and see what you get. Okay, equals 16, and then I use that in the formula, and I get m equals 10. There's a couple problems here for you to work on, so you can pause here and come back and check your answers. So here are the answers for the three mixed practice problems. And as you can see, once you kind of get used to the language, it's a plug and chug. You're plugging into a formula, and you're using substitution to solve back for something else. To review at the bottom, make sure that you take a look at this little box. These are all the key elements for you to remember. And there's extra practice in your packets if you choose to do that. We will work more on this tomorrow. Have a great night, everyone.